Hi everybody, my name is Amber Dene Wright and I am 28 years old from Cape Town, South Africa. In August of 2020, a week before my 28th birthday, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, stage 1, type 2, invasive duct carcinoma. This was the biggest shock of my life. I had gone in the week before to have a lump removed from my right breast, thinking that it was just a normal fibroadenoma. And a week later, when I went for my post-op appointment with the surgeon, my life was changed forever. In one moment, my whole world was turned upside down, and the most harrowing news that you could receive at such a young age was delivered to me at a hospital here in Cape Town. That moment when I was told the news and where the plan for the next few months of my life was told to me, the biggest thing that I could think about was that I was going to have to lose my hair. Obviously one of the side effects of having to go through chemotherapy is the hair loss. And in that moment, that was the thing that was in my mind, that I was going to lose my hair. And before this, I and my whole life, I've had really long, beautiful, curly hair. Something that people have always complimented me on, something that I found my identity in, something that made me feel beautiful. And I realized that I was going to lose all of that. And that was very scary for me. And so as the weeks went on, the moment that I knew was coming started to weigh heavily on me as I knew at any day now this was going to happen. And exactly two weeks after I had started my chemotherapy, my hair started to fall out. I woke up on the Monday morning and there was some hair on my pillow. And as the week went on, more and more hair started falling out. And it was then all over my clothes, it was in my bed, it was on my floor. When I showered, it was all over the shower. And it was a very, very scary thing to go through. Um, luckily, I had so much hair and such thick hair that that week, even though lots of it was falling out, it wasn't that noticeable. And for the last couple of days of that week, I kept it tied up in a pony just so that I didn't have to see it all falling out because it was a very emotional thing to experience, especially because I knew what it meant. And on the Saturday, um, after my hair started falling out that week, I went to go shower and wash my hair. And as I pushed, pulled my hands through my hair with the shampoo, all of my hair just started pulling out here in the front. And um, with tears in my eyes, I called to my husband who came into the shower and he said to me, I'm so sorry, my love, but it's coming out. And then he proceeded to climb into the shower with me and with a pair of scissors started to cut my hair. It had all basically formed a big clump on the top of my head and all around the sides, there was no hair. So he stood with me and he started to cut the pieces short enough so that we would be able to shave it. And that night for about an hour and a half, after he finished cutting it, we sat here in our apartment and with a very small handheld shaver, my husband shaved my head. And I sobbed my eyes out. I cried and cried and cried and even though I knew it had been coming from the moment I was diagnosed, the reality was very, very scary. Um, and for a long time that evening, for the while that he was cutting it, I, I hadn't looked in the mirror and I was terrified. I had found my identity in my looks and my hair, and now that was all going to change. And I was afraid of what I'd look like. I was terrified to look in the mirror and to not recognize that person. And after he'd finished shaving it, with shaking hands and my heart beating out of my chest, I walked to the mirror to have a look at myself for the first time. And when I looked in the mirror, I think that there was relief, there was obviously some shock, um, and, but mainly relief because the thing that I'd been fearing the most for the last month was finally over. And I didn't look too bad. I looked a bit disheveled and I looked definitely ill, but I didn't look as bad as I was fearing. And so there was great relief in knowing that this huge big fear that I had was finally over and I could just move on and the next day we went to my parents house and my dad had a proper high powered head razor and my dad then finished up and touched up the patches that were um, still quite uh, messy on the top of my head 
Um, and I don't think that's it. Those are two moments that I don't think any person should ever have, have to experience. Having your husband shave your head in the shower and then having your dad shave your head. As a girl, it was a very, very traumatic, very emotional thing. Um, but thankfully, because I'd known it was coming, I had planned and prepared. And the week before I started to lose my hair, I had gone to Fascination Hair here in Cape Town. And I had tried on a whole bunch of wigs with my mum. And I would found a beautiful wig that I felt confident in. And that felt like it would make me feel normal when the inevitable happened. And so I bought myself a beautiful, short, blonde, sort of ombre blonde, uh, Elizabeth wig from John Renault. And I think having that gave me a lot of strength in losing my hair because I knew that if I hated the way I looked with no hair, I would at least have this beautiful wig to put on and make me feel normal. And I was really grateful for that. And I've worn both my Elizabeth wig and my January wig, which I later purchased over the last few months. And they've helped me to feel normal and to feel like myself. Especially January because she's short and dark and curly and very much like my hair was before I lost it. And so those wigs really gave me confidence. They gave me peace in my heart that people wouldn't look at me strange if I was wearing them because no one could tell that I was wearing a wig. And I'm not sure if I should take it as an insult or a huge compliment, but I received more compliments about my hair wearing both my wigs than I ever did with my natural hair. And that's just testament to how natural the wigs look and how beautiful they look. So I've been so grateful to have the opportunity to wear these two wigs to help me feel like a woman in the moments where looking at myself with a bald head just didn't feel like me. And thankfully over time and over you know a couple of days and weeks and months of having no hair, I learned to love the way I looked without hair. I learned to appreciate things that were inside and, and realize that it's, it's what's inside that counts. It's not about the outward beauty and it's not about what you look like on the outside, but that when you've got no hair and you've got no eyebrows and you've got no eyelashes and you don't have those physical attributes to fall back on, you're forced to work on the person that's inside and the person that you really are. And I think that's what people will remember you for. No one's going to remember what you look like, but people are going to remember the kind of person that you were. And I hope that I will always be remembered as a kind person. And with this whole journey that I've been on, that has been so traumatic and so devastating, there's been so much good that's come from it. And I did get to work on myself in a way that I would never otherwise have had to. And so I've chosen to see the positive in all of this. And yes, it has been the very, very worst eight months of my life. And it's been the very hardest eight months of my life. But I've come out stronger and I will fight and I will beat breast cancer. It won't define me and it won't be the end of my story. I've got a lot more life and love and joy to live and to experience and I can't wait for what's going to be next in my life. I know it's going to be great and I know that I'm going to be a much better off person for having walked this really difficult road. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed hearing a bit about my story and a bit about who I am. I'm wishing you all a wonderful day further and sending lots and lots of love.